were on like extra, right? Yeah, I was on extra. Yeah. Now, yeah. Will you say they jumped the shark now that you're not on it? Actually, right. no. You know what, dude? Entertainment news, man. It was fun. And it's like I'm not really cut out for that. And like, look, I know a lot of people think I'm like I'm a douche. You do, and I get it. And I've done a lot of things that kind of prove that, you know. But I, I it, it, it was fun doing that show. You know, they go, hey, you want a boatload of money to fucking read the prometer and go fucking ask Lindsay Lohan a question? I go, sure, I'll do that. You know what I'm saying? It's like. But the record was kind of, our last record was kind of falling on favor. Sugar Ray wasn't blowing up the charts anymore. And the writing was kind of on the wall. You know, I've been with these guys 21 years, same five dudes. We love to play music. You know, we're going to play no matter what. You know, just because it's why we started. We got lucky. We had some hits and people still, you know, were very good to us. But, you know, I'm playing tonight with Kumo D and fucking Dougie Fresh on a show. Man, I'm getting paid for it. It's pretty good stuff. And the extra thing, I kind of just fell into it, man. And, um... And it was fun to do for a while, but like Mario Lopez, the host, is now he's a great, he's a great host, dude. He's born to do that shit, man. The mm. dimples and that, hey, man, <laughs> he kills it. You know, he's good at it. Yeah. I was kind of like, I, I fell in back the back door in that one. I, I wasn't what they really needed. You know, I, when I interviewed people, I'd make the interviewee feel weird. You can't be doing that, man. You know, I'd be like sh shaking, nervous. You know, my first interview was William Shatner, mm -hmm. and he was coming out after the uh, Emmys, and he had his Emmy, and I go, and he looked at me, and went. Uh, bu, 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 you know, just <laughs> clown me, dude. Like, oh my god. That's my first interview, and I go, This is gonna be a long wait, wait, road or extra. Wait, you weren't surprised being a Howard Surf fan knowing William Shatner would do that, probably. Yeah, I wasn't surprised at all, but I just thought maybe there'd be a little compassion, dude. I go, yeah. Look, bro, I, I just, I'm new to this. But I was there four years, and I love the people there. There's some of the most hardworking fools there at Extra. Like, every day they start at five in the morning and make a show. There's no show when you walk in there at five. By ten thirty, there's a show. So they're hardworking people, man. They kind of get, they kind of get, kind of dissed a little, or you know, it's lightweight cheese, and it certainly is that. But I've met some of the smartest, most hardworking gangster people who work at those shows. You know what I mean? True. How did you get up with DJ Homicide? Homicide, I met uh, about fucking sixteen years ago. He's a new guy in the band. You know, we were uh, big fans of. Uh, Buzztone, Buzztone back entertainment back then. They were managed House of Pain, Cypress Hill, Funk Dubious, uh, all the old school sort of LA revival of hip hop. Then remember there was sort of that wave, ninety one, ninety two, jump around, uh, you know, how, how to just kill a man, uh, Sun Dubious, all those cats were doing a thing. And from Newport Beach, that were like, you know, we were the suburban kids buying that shit. And we go, we just we were, we, we were trying to hustle. We had some record deals opening. We we're looking for management, so we would just go up to Buzztone and just jump in the offices and get some stickers. And go, we're, we're into it. We met a guy named Paul Pontius there who eventually went on to sign Incubus, Corn, and all these guys, became a huge AR guy. And he kind of, there were DJ kids that would hang around the Buzztown office just to get a little shine, get some crumbs, you know? Mm -hmm. And Homicide was one of those guys. And Paul said, I think you guys will only jive with this dude, you know? Yeah. And uh, he was the first guy we met, and we loved the guy. He's a clown just like that. And, you know, 16 years later, we're still, we're still jamming with him. He's the new guy in the band, but mm -hmm. he's great. I mean, he was one of A&M's close, A &M, a &M, a &M, a &M's close homies, and uh, he kind of got into that DJ gig thing. He does a lot of gigs around the country. I mean, I'm sure your readers or your viewers might have, uh, readers and viewers, will uh, have seen him some clubs. He does a lot of that stuff. So, mm -hmm. honored to have him. He kind of gives, he's the dynamic of the show that Everybody. makes us not a rock band, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll put on Journey in the middle. You'll see him tonight, and you get the crowd doing their thing. He brings a DJ performance element into the rock Show and that's sort of something that's really cool for us, dynamic. Um, are you a fan of The Wire, out of curiosity? Because I'm a big fan of The Wire. The Wire, oh, The Wire, yeah. I was not a fan of it. It's the best oh, show yeah. on TV. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you must love that living here, you know? Yeah. Some of the best acting, writing, and real situations I've ever seen. It's almost too gritty for, for you know, for mm. TV. Have you been in The Wire or anything, dude? Been extra or something? Nah, but it was kind of just, it was out for a while until I, I just saw it this year for the first time. Oh, yeah. I was late to it, too, man. Well, Actually, I saw the first season that came on later, man. I like those Laker kicks, dude. I'm stoked yeah, on those, I'm man. a big Kobe fan. <laughs> those are fucking me too, dude. Believe it. So what's your favorite auxiliary show on Howard 100? Like, not the main show. I love Chuck's Udo show. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love that show. I, I love... Uh, I think the wrap-up show is great. Mm -hmm. I wish they'd bring back the Friday show. The thing I miss... Mo I think I miss about the channels, dude, is, is just the live content. And I think when they replay the show, they replay too many of the same things. It was with a little more diversity in that. Um, I, 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 I like Mary Ann's show. I thought it was cool for a second because I just like she makes me laugh. Um, I think the Gadget show, the, uh, Geeks, the Geek show is great. Um, and Tower's trying to shit can that. I think Ronnie's show is terrible. I do. And you know what I think show is the worst? And I've just never been a fan. Is Jackie's joke hunt? I think it's, I, oh, it's, yeah. it's so bad. It's like it's so bad. I don't I don't see how he's ever put up with that for so long. Um, you know what I mean, dude? The joke hunt, bro. Yeah. And like I don't know. I just joke hunt bumps me out. And to hear to hear uh to hear like Jackie wants to meet Howard to get some more programming. Like, no, <laughs> no. 
Yeah. The guy like Jackie was on the show. Yeah. I just don't think the jokes that funny. It's a generational thing, and that like it's two generations below me, and like probably six below the youngest people in the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like it, man? I'm not joking. I can't. I mean, I hear I'm smoking pot. I got my dick <laughs> out. And I'm thinking about you, and I just go change. <laughs> You know, yeah. now I'm I'm an Artie guy over Jackie. Well, all day, man. But Artie's tripping too, though. Man, you know? yeah. I think I've never seen someone really, really. Oh, not again. I use my words delicately. Like Howard doesn't know what to do with Artie, and I've never seen. He's always. I mean, it, there's not another Howard wouldn't let Gary get away with it. What, what Artie gets away with, and I know Artie's got problems. I get it. You know, but like he would have been gone a years ago. I mean, Howard I, Gary would have been gone. Act, but he's got some softness and like. Kindness and, and warmth in his heart for, for for Artie, like we all do. But like Artie just knows, fuck it, I'm taking a week off. What are you going to fire me? Obviously, you're not going to fire me. And, he, and, and Artie will walk back in, you know, in, in January and it'll be all gravy, you know what I mean? Yeah. Artie's got the best job in show business. He didn't have to show up. He really doesn't. Do you have a favorite whack packer? Uh, let's see. You know who I love eating, God rest his soul, is Hank the Dwarf. Hank yeah. the Dwarf beat me in trivia. Oh, really? <laughs> back, uh, back in like 2001, because I won a few Rock and Roll Jeopardy, uh, a couple of them, and mm. I know Gary's, Gary's really hip in uh, tr music trivia, but Hank the Dwarf was like an idiot savant rain man, was 70s Rock and Roll trivia. So they put me in there, and they were asking me like, who's the roadie for Spooky Tooth in 71? I go, can you just get the 80s a little bit? So like, he beat me like three to one or something, but it was kind of skewed to his wheelhouse. For the kind of seventies uh, rock and roll trivia, mm -hmm. but I love Bigfoot. I can't get enough from Bigfoot. <laughs> it I love, is. You know, I, you know, I don't get is medicated pee. Oh really? I think he's okay. Yeah, he's okay. I mean, either have Tourette's or don't have Tourette's. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't think he's not that interesting on the radio. He's a nice guy, but yeah. I, Howard loves medicated pee. There must be something going on behind the scenes, yeah. like the staring thing. I don't see. I know he stares at everybody. I obviously we're not there, but I don't yeah. know why they love medicated pee so much. I don't, I don't get it. Sure. Have you ever been to any of Howard's functions outside of the show? No, because I've been to a few birthday parties of his when they used to have him at the at Roseland and shit. So that's outside the show, but it's still the show. But I have not I've been invited to any dinners or something. But I've been lucky enough to connect with Howard a little bit, and he gave me the proverbial Greg Fitzsimmons like, "Come out to my house in the Hamptons." <laughs> now I'll never use it because I saw what happens when Greg Fitzsimmons did it. You know, yeah, yeah. Howard's like, "I was just fucking kidding, man. I don't want you to come." So I know he doesn't really, doesn't really want me to come, but I, I kind of reached out to him and I told him. I'm getting 42 now, you know, I do a lot of jogging because I eat shitty food all day. Yeah. And my knees are starting to kill me. He and Rob were talking about the treadmill the other day. He goes, I got this technique Rob will talk about off the air. I don't want to bore the audience. And so I reached out to Howard. I go, dude, what is this technique? And he goes, listen, my man Pat, I'm next time you come to New York, I'll bring you this guy Pat and we'll, I'll show you this Romanoff technique on how to work out. So I'm almost, that's almost my in where I might even reach out to him and go, dude, because I, I need the technique. Hampton's saying he's clean. I'm not going to bother about that. But I'd love to go out there, dude. You know, just be Ralph and barf in his bed and piss all over. <laughs> I'd love to do that, but uh, I'll, 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 I'll keep from that. But I might ask him pretty because I need it for the Romanoff technique. Have you had a chance to meet Beth though yet? I, you know, Beth worked in extra for a little bit. She was oh, really? correspondent. I didn't, I've never got a chance to meet Beth. Mm -hmm. Funny that the girl that I that left me for the Howard Stern show, Maya. Uh, she's in contact with Beth, and she knows Beth really well. So I feel like I know her from afar, but I've never had the chance to really say hello. That we're on extra together and stuff. I feel like yeah. I know her, I just don't. You know? She's just stunning, though. That's for sure. Yeah. I can see why Howard's like, "Fuck, man, I'm, <laughs> I don't. I want to quit radio. Yeah. I'm gonna go to the Hamptons and bang all summer." Yeah. You guys gonna, you know, you can listen to the fucking wrap up show for the next five years. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you such a nice guy when a lot of your contemporaries might be a holes? I don't know, you know, dude. Whether I'm a nice guy or not, or a, a hole, I understand. Look. It, this this job, there's a lot of, you know, people are saying when you see a celebrity, not saying I am one, but when you see one, like, it's it's their first time. This is your moment. And this, some, you know, they're human beings. So, like, if someone's an asshole, like, you got to understand, like, imagine if you at home, every five minutes you went to dude, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, I know you're, if people at home like, I would kill for that. And you would. So would I. But if people aren't always cool, you got to sort of give them a break a little bit. But for me, as a guy who really didn't have an incredible abundance of talent, dude, I got lucky. I backed into this thing. I've been paid very well to do this. And I'm, I'm playing an amazing gig tonight with Kumo D and, 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 and Dougie Fresh. And I understand how fragile this is going to go away. Because for Sugar Ray, it's kind of gone away. We're certainly not selling records anymore. We're not drawing millions of people to concerts. So I understand how fragile it was. And, and I was raised differently. And I appreciate everybody coming up to say hello. So I understand why people are assholes. You know, I feel like being an asshole sometimes. It's just not really in my DNA. And I have been to people. So I apologize if you're watching this. Going, that guy's been a dick to me. <laughs> But uh, I just, I, I know how lucky and fortunate I was to have any any sort of career at all with like limited talent. I know I've worked hard to do it, and I know the band has too, but uh, I just I, I, I just appreciate people, I appreciate being here, so it makes it a little bit easier. So if you got me at 7 in the morning, I'm fucking hungover because I've been up to 5, I'm getting a coffee, and I was a dick, 
I apologize, man. Sure.